Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about mucormycosis, which is a fungal disease, and it has taken the headline of news these days. It has created a huge fear in everybody's mind. So, let us try to understand what is mucormycosis. What is the biological basis of this infection? How we can prevent this infection? And what are the possible treatment options? So, stay tuned till the end of the video. Mucormycosis, previously called zygomycosis, is a serious but rare fungal infection caused by a group of molds called mucormycetes. The most common types that cause mucormycosis are rhizopus species and muco species. These molds live throughout the environment. They are almost everywhere. It is creating a huge swelling and inflammation and many people are losing their vision due to this infection. So, let's see how does this infection happens and where do we find these fungus. We can find mucomycosis in many places such as moist soil, decaying organic matter, animal dung, leaves etc. All of these places you might find these funguses. Now, once you are passing through these area, some of the fungal pores you might accidentally, unknowingly, you might have been healed them. Now, in normal situation, it's not a big deal. Our body knows how to fight against it. But it's a big deal for people who are immunocompromised and in a moment it would be clear. But before that, let me tell you, these fungal infection can happen via several routes. One of the common route is entry by inhalation, where the spores enter our lungs. Second, there could be the entry through injury site. Let's say that you have an injury to your hand and these fungus spores might have entered your system by that or it could be taken inside through food. So, there are also gut associated entry points. So, any fungal diseases can be classified based on the criteria and it's most important to understand the several classes of mucormycosis infection as well. So, the site of infection based on superficial, cutaneous, subcutaneous or deep and systemic and based on route of acquisition, they could be exogenous or endogenous and based on virulence. They could be primary or opportunistic. So, these are different classification modes. As well as this mucormycosis infection is concerned, there are rhinocerebral mucormycosis which generally affects the sinus and brain whose symptoms include one-sided facial swelling, headache, nasal or sinus congestion, black lesions on nasal bridge or upper inside of mouth that quickly become more severe or fever. Now, the other type such as pulmonary mucormycosis whose symptoms include fever, cough, chest pain or shortness of breath etc. There are other type that is cutaneous mucormycosis where skin is getting infected and there are patches. There could be pain, warmth, excessive redness or swelling around the wound. Now, in the case of gastrointestinal mucormycosis, there could be severe abdominal pain, vomiting and nausea. Gastrointestinal bleeding, all of these kind of infections are possible. Now, the last type is disseminated mucormycosis. Typically occurs in people who are suffering from other medical conditions. So, it can be hard to interpret which symptoms are related to mucormycosis. Patients with disseminated infection in the brain can develop mental status changes or coma. Now, these fungi aren't harmful to most people and our body have learned how we can possibly deal with these fungi. Problem occurs in immunocompromised individuals because their body don't know how to deal with it and their immune system is weakened. So, these kind of infections is prevalent in patients who has undergone organ transplantations, 
stem cell transplantations, long-term corticosteroid use, skin injury due to surgery, burns or wounds, etc. People who are taking diabetic medications and people who are fighting with cancer. And also there are chances people who are abusing drugs so they might also catch this infection because their immune system is also weakened. So it is the kind of secondary infection where your immune system is really weak, generally the cancer. If you are having a very good immune response then you might not catch this infection and even if you catch this infection then your body knows how to deal with it. Now the biggest question that comes into your mind is that is mucomycosis contagious as contagious as COVID-19 and the answer is no. It is not contagious. So the chances are you are not spreading it to any individual who is near you. Now the question is how can one lower the risk of mucormycosis? First of all we should avoid places which are dusty or which has all of cow dung or other kind of like animal fleshes and places which are moist and filled up with funguses. We can possibly avoid these places. Now, if that is not possible, one way of preventing or reducing the risk of infection is using of mask and also maintaining a good hand hygiene is crucial for avoiding infection. Lastly, what we can all do is get a healthy meal and eat those substances which can boost your immunity reaction. Now, this is an indirect way of fighting back because if we strengthen our immune system, it might be more efficient in terms of clearing fungal infections as well. And we have to avoid the junk food as much as possible because they don't have nutritive values and they are not really useful to boost our immunity. Now, let's try to understand how the detection of mucormycosis takes place. Let's say you have mucormycosis in lungs which is pulmonary variant of that. So you can possibly have a biopsy from your lungs or if you have sinus or you might have samples from sinus and lastly those sinuses are sending to the lab where culture experiments are performed or using microscope you can also determine whether this fungus has infected our body or not. Your doctor must also prescribe a CT scan in specific cases. Now let us try to understand that how our body fights back against funguses. There are several cell types in our body which plays crucial role in terms of fighting funguses. One such cell type is neutrophil but before that let me tell you that both our immune system that means the innate immune system and adaptive immune system has the capability of fighting funguses. Innate immune system such as macrophages, dendritic cells, neutrophils can fight funguses. In adaptive immune cell specifically T cell, Th1 type cell, Th17 type cells can fight back funguses. So in this situation you have to understand what medications can be prescribed and also a huge respect to doctors. So guys I hope you enjoyed this video.